we're delighted to be here today. You may not know who we are, and she explained who they were. And she says, but we're here today to honor one of your teachers. And oh, I'm going, oh, that's nice. That's nice. I wonder who it is. We <laughs> <laughs> had no idea. And so she talks. She starts to talk. Oh, and then she says, so students, what do you think? This also involves, there's a monetary award with this. What do you think would be a nice amount of money to give one of these teachers for whatever they want? And the kids would go, oh, $10,000, ha, 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 and oh, 15000 No, no, this award is only $25,000. <laughs> So anyway, she starts talking about this person and the character and all this, all these little things she knows about this person. And um, I, I, I'm sitting there going, "You started deducing." Well, no, I but I'm, I'm deducing, but at the same time, I'm, I'm thinking everybody in here is doing the same thing. Everybody here thinks it's them. So I said, "So just stop it. Just sure. stop this nonsense and be ready to applaud whoever goes up there." Kids, thanks for tuning in. I'm Gary Gillette, and this is Music in Missoula. And look, look, I've got my buddy Dean Peterson here with me. I had to hog time and bring him in here and the snow plows and everything else. But we've got, we've got a chance. Dean was actually my first choice when I began this escapade uh, months ago. And the way things worked out, he was busy. Other things came up. And finally... Uh, uh, I got over the COVID enough to be able to come back into the studio. And Dean's nice enough to be here during a week of hectic, hectic activity going on for him because he's got a gig this weekend. Dean, what, what's the gig, man? Uh, we've got the Missoula Symphony Chorale and Orchestra doing the Holiday Pops this weekend. It's the official opening to the holiday season in Missoula. So December 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And... Uh, it's, I think it's, it's a big deal. It's a three-day run, it's three right? three days, normally a two-day run, but this is such a popular concert series, or series of a concert, that we run it three days. And yeah, we're, we've been rehearsing a bunch, and dress rehearsal tonight, and then performances start tomorrow. And you do some, are some things standalone, and some things with the orchestra? The, uh, that the, the chorale usually sings at least one or two pieces, a cappella, so you can just actually hear, hear the, the chorale choir. entirely. Is it being orchestra. covered up by all those days? Well, with, uh, they're, they're pretty good about balance. <laughs> they're working on balance quite a bit. They it, really are. And it, it's it, a constant it's a constant battle because we think we're more important instrumentalists. That's and, the, and that the choral is, you know, like background. And in fact, uh, almost always it's the other well, way around. Well, but it's a challenging. It's also a challenging venue. It's it's a challenging stage because you know when you stick a choir behind an orchestra, the orchestra is what's going to really take you know the front. It's a, it's ahead of them, sure. and so it's hard to compete. And so hopefully it isn't a competition, but we can work together. And then, you know, Julia Tai, our, our newest conductor, is really good at, at trying to get all of the balance just right. So it's going well. It's going well, and balance is not an issue. She, she must be quite demanding and uh, sensitive to She's, those potential problems. She gets what she wants out of the orchestra and the chorale, but in a very polite, nice way. Ah, yes. okay. Well, I'll talk to some of those wind players. I got... I played. I did play under her. She's very nice. Yep. I, I played the, the summer concert down at the park, yep. and she's very agreeable, nice gal. Mm -hmm. Gets good sounds. Uh, she's a, she's a great. She's a great addition to the to the Missoula community, and it's it's really nice that she's committed to being here, and she's moved here and bought a home, and a her kid. daughter is in school over at Paxson. And uh, yeah, so it's it's wonderful to have her as a part of our community, and she's committed to being a, a real part of this community. So and like she to is to her. the. She's the instrumental arm of the Missoula Symphony Orchestra, and you're the choral arm. Right. Is that right? This yep. is an official position, and you've done it for how many years? Eh? I think I've done it for 16 years. 16 years. You I've been took in it this over position. before retiring. Yeah. From yeah. The school. So, Dean, 
Dee and I are both uh, 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 alumni from Missoula County Public Schools, high schools, and then they changed the public schools. And Dean was a choir teacher at Hellgate for 100 years, and I was over at Sentinel and Big Sky doing the band stuff. So we continue to do stuff together uh, uh, out of tit for tat. That uh, uh, he'll ask, ask me to play tuba on a, a number, and then I'll ask him to come and sing with the city band on a number, and we go back and forth, and we keep a ledger, and I believe that... Uh, I'm ahead. I think so. Yes, I'm ahead. I think so, because now you count this as one of these favors, huh? Yep, definitely ahead. Even though it's all about promoting you and the, the symphony chorale. Oh, okay. That's what it's all about. Oh, okay. Dean, tell, <laughs> tell us about yourself, just briefly. Who is Dean Perry? Because we've got inquiring people that want to know. Oh, I'm sure we do. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's really I'm sure. interested. Do you know where he was born? <laughs> really? okay. well, I bet you don't. Okay, so um, I was born a poor one. I am a native <coughs> Montana. Ah! I've never lived in California. So are you, ever. aren't you, Scott? Never Weren't you lived. born here? Okay, at least two or three. Never lived in California, and I am. Yeah, what? For, I am fourth you generation. Did. Once. You did live for in California year. for one year. I was right. not born in California. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, That's the difference. Okay. Yeah. No. No. I was not born in California. <laughs> I am a true Montana. My great grandparents uh, homesteaded over in the Livingston area. And uh, that's where I grew up. And if you had anything to do ever with Livingston, you were railroad. And the family was strictly railroad um, every generation. Uh, my dad was an engineer on the road. He ran freight from Livingston to Helena. And uh, most of my uncles worked in the back shops. And they were mechanics. And they were electricians. And, you know, they all started out in the days of steam. In fact, my dad started out firing. He was a fireman on the steam trains. As a going, person shoveling yep, the yep, coal that's how or he the started wood, right? Before World War II. And then he saw the transition from, from steam to diesel and in his career. And he had a very long career. But anyway, that being said, um, fortunately, I feel, for me, by the time my generation came around, we finally... My cousins and myself, my brother, we were able to break away from the railroad. And, and it's because of the support of our parents and the importance they placed on education. They sent us off to college. And uh, so we were able to, to better ourselves and get great college educations. Um, here in the state, my brother at MSU, myself at U of M. And um, yeah. But I, I, was a, I was a very strange person in my family because... What? You use that in past tense? Well, I was because, well, back then, <laughs> I, was, I was way into music from day one. I, I pleaded for piano lessons. And finally, by the time I was in fourth grade, my parents were sick of it. And they said, yes, let him okay. have piano lessons. Was there a piano in the house? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. My brother took sort of off and on. And didn't uh, how our home. older siblings wreck our lives almost. Yep. Is this good? Ugh. So anyway, my parents didn't want to even go through it again, but they did, and they never had to tell me to practice. They never had to do anything. I just took off, and I loved it. It spoke to me, and it was easy. It was easy. So I was way into piano and hit high school and played for all the choirs and kind of assisted our choral conductor. And were you never in the band? Did no, the, I never. I was, didn't let I you was be going in the band. To, I was going to be in band at one point in a summer program. They were gonna. He really wanted. He wanted a bassoon player. Ah, and, and so, you could read music and, for yeah, you. You're yeah. halfway there. So he was trying to get me to play bassoon. And then at the last minute, he canceled the summer band program. So And lost his so, only bassoon. Yes. You could have been an all-state bassoon player. I probably could have. Yes. I remember the embouchure quite clearly. Let's you. see that embouchure, Dean. <laughs> what? Oh, it's got a good jaw. start for it. Anyway. <laughs> So anyway, after that, I, I got a scholarship, a piano scholarship to U of M, came to U of M, eventually added music ed. So I did a double degree in piano, my, my real love, and then music ed. And um, I landed a job right here in Missoula, right out of college, um, taught elementary music in back then school district one, because the mm -hmm. elementary district was separate from the high school district. I did that for eight years, in the middle of which I went and finished up a master's degree in uh, a method of music education from Hungary, the Kodai method. Kodai. So I, uh, I, I taught You'll elementary. You'll know Kodai's tune. That's the famous one. Okay. And then uh, <laughs> I thought we weren't going to do anything. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That's what I get for it. Um, you, I lost my train of thought. Uh, oh, so anyway, eventually uh, the Hellgate High School job opened up, and I was ready for a challenge, and I took on the Hellgate High School job, and it was a challenge. Um, 
but it turned out to be a, a really wonderful career. I spent 25 years at Hillgate High School and uh, never looked back, and uh, what a great school. What a Hellgate High School, best school, I think, in the state of Montana. Um, it, it, and he it, had the best choir. It is the biggest right. melting pot of, of any place I've ever seen. And, and what, what, what was so much fun about teaching at Hellgate is you would have every socioeconomic level in your choir from, you know, you would have kids from Potomac, uh, Bonner, North East Side. Missoula, the University, University area, yeah. the, the Rattlesnake, you had everything. So you had, you know, you had professors and deans of students, kids in your choir, but you had farmers' kids in your choir. You had mechanics' kids in your choir, and they all came together and they all made music together. And that's why music is important, because it crosses all boundaries. And it it's just a very important and thing. And it fit for you. The, the Hellgate yep. fit you and it vice versa. Yep, yep. So right. I loved Hellgate. I hope Hellgate loved me. Yeah, you did. And uh, it was a great job. And you retired. How long have you been out? I, now, I left Hellgate. I My daughter graduated from Hellgate in 2011, and my agreement was I would graduate with her in 2011. So I graduated into retirement in 2011. So it's been 10 years. Yeah, it's 11 so years. It's so Goodness. important that, that for many of us to have our kids in our groups and be yeah. able to see them through. And I, I did a similar thing. Yep. Yeah, I had both of my children in my choirs and my Chevaliers, which was the ultimate group to be in. If you were in choir at Hellgate, you needed to be in the Chevaliers. So both of my kids sang with me all four of their high school years. And, and then my daughter and I graduated together. Oh, how sweet. I'm gonna. I, I need to talk to Ellen and see if she wants to sing with the big band at the, the New Year's Eve. Okay. Um, ooh, where was I? Oh, uh, so now you do the you do the, the Missoula Symphony Chorale, right? And right. you also do the Mendelssohn. Well, at least, I've been doing uh, the Mendelssohn, but this is my last year for sure. In fact, I believe I'm only going to probably do one more rehearsal with them. Oh. They took. They were gone for two. They were gone for two years because of COVID. And we just started resuming rehearsals this year, and we're getting them back on their feet. But um, hopefully, hopefully they're going to find a new conductor soon. Put the word out there if anybody's interested in conducting a choir in Missoula, the Mendelssohn Club. You, you say in choir? The Missoula Mendelssohn Club is looking for a conductor. So and it's an all men's. It's an all men's group. Amateur. Yes, that's been around forever. Nineteen forty-five. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, who's. Don Carey had it, but didn't uh, Don Carey Musselman it. do it before Musselman him? Musselman had it a brief time. I believe George Lewis had it. Um, a lot of the... It's almost as old as the city band. It's 45, 1945. Uh, all, the guys, all the guys came back from World War II and were wanting oh, to sing. And, okay. And they, they formed a, a great group. And there were Mendelssohn clubs all over the United States at that time. So this is probably one of the last Mendelssohn clubs still existing. It, it is an international organization. I don't know that it's... Yeah, wait, maybe it is. I think there was some connection to England with it, too. Okay. I think there's still Mendelssohn Clubs maybe in England. I wouldn't quote me on that, though. Okay. But, yeah. Hey, uh, what's your most... What, what, what musical moment of importance comes first to your mind in your life that you've experienced? Well, there's been quite a few. Yeah, um, it's hard to knock it down. So a personal, a personal, for me, musically and personally musically, not with conducting and not was I was selected to sing um, with a semi-professional choir in Carnegie Hall back in the 90s with Robert Shaw. And anyone oh, who knows anything about choral music. Boob of choral yeah, music. Yeah, he was the, the great, you know, the great choral conductor, Robert Shaw. And so I was, I, by audition, I was chosen to sing with this group in Carnegie Hall. And we did a huge piece called the Beethoven Misa Solemnis, mm -hmm. and it was uh, it was a really life changing. Incredible, well, yeah, actually, getting to Carnegie Hall and singing on that mm. stage, it's... and and knowing what what incredible performers and performances have happened there, and being able to sing with a semi professional group, it was really a wonderful, wonderful experience. I and bet. and that piece is so complex. So it was it was an amazing Carnegie, experience. Carnegie, we never talked about it. you know that that that's as musicians that we, we you talk about it and hear about it, but until until we step out on stage, I did Carnegie as a senior in college and Life changing. It's a beautiful. Totally. It's a beautiful concert. Beautiful, venue. acoustically oh, beautiful. Gosh, yeah, really something. Uh, and the, I understand why it could be life changing, especially with Shaw at the, at the stick. Yep. And oh my gosh, yeah, it was it was an amazing. Um, other other experiences 
Which where the I, Milliken Award winner? Oh no, it's Milken. God, I even thought about it, trying not to be a jerk. Uh, the Milken Award, <laughs> yeah, that that was a that was a wonderful honor. An and honor to you personally as a music educator. Well, <coughs> teaching honors are an interesting thing in that teachers often apply for honors. Like, like the the teacher of the year is often an application process that you go through. So it's coming from you. Like, I want to apply for this. Does it look good on my resume? So people do that. But the Milken Award was not that. I had no idea this was coming. Um, and it was a October day, and they, they were having an, a, a sudden assembly in the gym, and all the people were there, and suddenly I realized my wife was there, and, and it was this surprise thing. And, and so the, the superintendent of public instruction, Nancy Keenan at that time, uh -huh. was down there, and she got up and she says, well, we're delighted to be here today. You may not know who we are, and she explained who they were, and says, but we're here today to honor one of your teachers. And oh, I'm going, oh, that's nice. That's nice. I wonder who it is. is. <laughs> we have no idea. And so she talks. She starts to talk. Oh, and then she says, so students, what do you think? This also involves, there's a monetary award with this. What do you think would be a nice amount of money to give one of these teachers for whatever they want? And the kids would go, oh, $10,000. Ha, 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 ha. And, oh, 15000 No, no, this award is only $25,000. <laughs> So anyway, she starts talking about this person and the character and all this, all these little things she knows about this person. And um, I, I, I'm sitting there going, "You started deducing." Well, no, I but I'm, I'm, I'm deducing. But at the same time, I'm, I'm thinking everybody in here is doing the same thing. Everybody here thinks it's them. So I said, "So just stop it. Just sure. stop this nonsense and be ready to applaud whoever goes up there." And then they called my name, and I just about, I just about fell down. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And then you turned around and used that award to build a studio on your well, house. We, Not just, but... We built, on, we built onto our house, including a new piano studio for my wife, who desperately needed a good place to teach. So she was able what to... What a gentleman. She Scott, was able to have a decent piano, a piano studio <laughs> added to our house. That was a wonderful thing. Yes, it was. Oh. It was. Um, but other experiences that, that would stand out would involve, would much more so in, instead of just about me, would, would involve the students I worked with. And I had mentioned my Hellgate Chevaliers earlier, and they were chosen in 2004 to represent Montana at the Northwest American Choral Directors Association as a performance group. And it's, it's an honor, it's a, it's a big deal. And we just, um, th that group was such a special group for me. Uh, and they worked so hard, and they presented a really wonderful program, and I was really very proud of them. And really good to go through the process of actually standing on a stage, other than just, you know, here in Missoula, but, but you know, in the whole Northwest, and you've got every choral conductor from Oregon and Washington and Idaho and Wyoming and Montana, and there's your kids singing for them. And they definitely did justice to my Hellgate school and, and to Missoula and Montana. So. That was a wonderful experience. And one other great experience that had nothing to do with the music is I took a group of students through the, universe, through the United States uh, State Man. Department to China. And we, uh, we did an exchange in China where we lived in China for three weeks with families and learned about their culture. And then we actually also, they came here for three weeks and lived with our families. So it was an exchange of students. I believe there were nine students in in our group so we brought nine in and we nine went over there and it was a whole six-week program that was really really amazing again we actually used music as our project uh even though these kids weren't all in music they all could sing and sure so we ended up doing a, a joint venture with our chinese students and we sang songs together and again the cultural the cultural Boundaries Bias, just, just they disappear, yeah. and, and, and everybody unifies again through music. It's a great unifier. And speaking of non musical things, that guess what Dean's hobby and passion what he does, what he does do when he's not doing music. Most of us losers just do one thing. I'm just a musician, but Dean does something else. I cross country ski. And uh, now, but more than that, all your I climb. Backpack. I backpack. Uh, you, you're an mountains. outdoorsman. Yeah. An outdoors person. You climb freaking mountains. Yeah. I don't know how much longer. <laughs> but uh, have, I mean, you, you, 
and we'll, we'll be driving somewhere and he'll point out a peak and he's been up there, he's planning on walking up there. Uh, I've gone on some walks with him, you know. And, hey, once we get past the meadow, I'm ready to turn back around and head to the lounge, but uh, Dean is. Well. Uh, so he's also, he's also uh, quite, a, quite a, uh, a walker, packer, hiker, packer, yeah. hiker. Hopefully. Okay. He's climber, whatever. Hey, <laughs> hey, you ought to come and hear him and the choir and the, and the orchestra will be there too. It'll be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with the Missoula Symphony of Art Orchestra and the Chorale. Hey, Join us. anything you wanna nope. want to add, buddy? Nope. Thanks for uh, shooting the video and good luck editing this stuff, Scotty. This is Gary Gillette and Dean Peterson. This is Music in Missoula. Thanks. See you next time.